Critics always hate the films who think they're great But only one appreciates them all He serves us every day, he keeps the trolls at bay Though he may be a shade delusional The shelter of his mouth is moist He will not give you any choice Agree with him or else because he At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. Alright. About to do episode one. It's not exactly a fan favorite, if you know what I mean. But... Film Defender never shies away from a challenge. Wait a second. I sense a disturbance in the Force. What are you? Are you an angel? Um, I guess that depends on who you ask. An angel? Yeah, I heard you. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. <laughs> really? You shouldn't. Wait a second. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm gonna fly away from this place. This is getting weird. I'm building a joy. You wanna see? Um. Has anybody ever seen a pod race? Alright, enough questions. What are midichlorians? Well, we probably shouldn't get into that. Did you hear that? Okay, would you stop? What will happen to me now? I don't even know what the heck you are. Would you- I'm a person. I think. Okay, you're really starting to- Yippee! Ah! <laughs> this is already coming back to haunt me, isn't it? Welcome to episode 8 of the film Defender. Serving the public good one underrated movie at a time. With the recent explosion of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens at the box office, I figured I'd go back to some previous Star Wars entries that were a little bit less well received. Starting with Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. That's right, I'm defending The Phantom Menace. <laughs> episode 1 is such a maliciously maligned movie that I hesitate to even come to its defense. Still, I have a public service to perform and have not the luxury of objectivity in some cases. Despite the overwhelming flood of hate towards this film, it may not be the abomination that everyone online wants to make it out to be. Objection number one. What's with all the politics in this movie? People get really hung up about the politics portrayed in The Phantom Menace, but it's not like the entire plot hinges around the Senate's deliberation about the taxation of trade routes. Just because they mention it in the opening crawl, which was probably not the best move admittedly, doesn't mean the politics are going to be a major focus in this movie. Ultimately, the inner workings of the Republic merely serve as a framing device for the story we really care about, the Jedi discovering the Phantom Menace. Their introduction to Anakin Skywalker and their budding investigation into the emerging threat that is the Sith is clearly the main focus of this movie. Still, I'll be talking about the main purpose for the politics in the next episode, so stay tuned. Objection number two. Jar Jar? Seriously, Jar Jar? Talk about the Phantom Menace. Man, does everyone hate the crap out of this kid-friendly character. When I was 12 years old, I actually thought Jar Jar was pretty funny. His goofy antics and clumsy pratfalls were hilarious to me at that age. And that's the best I can do. Perhaps I'm turning into the film apologist with this, but Jar Jar isn't a horrible travesty to the child audience that George Lucas was clearly aiming this movie towards. If he wasn't the key to all of this, as George Lucas so infamously says, Jar Jar is a key to all this. I think people would have far less of a problem with him. But for this film's target demographic, he serves his comedy relief function perfectly. Plus, he's a landmark in CGI development as one of the first fully digital characters in movie history. I mean, come on, is he really that annoying? Lisa, your highness? Lisa, go ahead! Lisa, show you! Come on, Lisa, show you! Stop it, you're ruining my defense. Objection number three. The acting here is really bad. Did you see that little kid? Sandstorms are very, very dangerous. Okay, there's one bad actor in this movie. But for a child, I think he's doing the best he can. 
Obviously, Lucas hasn't had a ton of experience, if any, working with child actors, and it clearly shows with Jake Lloyd's performance. Apart from a couple of unfortunate line readings, though, oops, he's doing a mostly serviceable job as a young Anakin Skywalker, and the rest of the cast actually does a pretty decent job. The obvious standouts are Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson, who bring energy and charisma to the otherwise stilted affair. I will take back what's ours. Alright, maybe there are two performances that aren't that great. But to be fair, Natalie Portman wasn't trying to act well in this film. Does that still count as a defense? Alright, how about this? The governing heads of the Republic are portrayed as self-serious characters who seem too emotionally hardened by their political experience to express their emotions. So given that, I'd say she did a pretty decent job of playing a teenage queen. Is that better? Objection number four! What was the point of that pod racing scene? Uh, since when do we need a plot-centric reason to have an awesome scene in a movie? Sure, the setup is a little contrived, but I'll accept any excuse if this is the result. The sound design alone makes this one of the most memorable scenes of the entire saga, let alone the groundbreaking visual effects. We also get subtle callbacks to the speeder chase on the forest moon of Endor in Return of the Jedi, as well as the trench run in A New Hope. Plus, we get a chance to see Anakin doing something cool, which was sorely needed. It also shows that Qui-Gon wasn't wrong to put his faith in the boy, who shows that he really was strong in the Force in order to compete in such a difficult race, let alone to win. So yeah, I guess there is a point to it. What do you know? Objection number five. Why are all the characters here so racist? Racist? Come on, guys, really? I don't see racism in the portrayal of any of these characters, probably because they're from a galaxy far, far away, and don't resemble human beings of any ethnicity. What's annoying about this argument is that people tend to read into it whatever racial stereotypes they're already indoctrinated with. The weird thing is that people accuse Lucas of being offensive to different races with the same character. Is Wada a Jewish stereotype? A Greek stereotype? Or a French stereotype? I've heard arguments for each of them, but if it's really that ambiguous as to which race should be offended by this portrayal, is it really worth getting upset about? I guess you can read into it whatever you want, but I've never associated these alien species with any particular racial identity. Now finally, we're going to talk about the biggest positive in this film by going into... SPOILER ALERT! SPOILER ALERT! SPOILER ALERT! Let's talk about that lightsaber duel, shall we? Seriously though, this lightsaber battle against Darth Maul may be one of the coolest scenes in movie history. Yeah, you heard me right. I still remember thinking about that duel non-stop after seeing it in theaters, and it was one of the main reasons I wanted to go back and see it so many times. Ray Park is incredible in this fight, performing the choreography and stunts with effortless precision. Plus, give credit to the other actors for more or less keeping up with him, especially Ewan McGregor who helps make this scene one of the best one-on-one -on -one fights I've seen in any movie. Seriously, anyone who says there's nothing good about this movie must have just skipped over this entire climax. And while I do wish Darth Maul had survived the fight, him getting cut in half is one of the coolest deaths in any Star Wars movie. Despite its flaws, The Phantom Menace is still an entertaining movie that further explores this massive universe and even introduces new characters into the public consciousness that are here to stay. Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace is updated status defended. <laughs> what did you think of The Phantom Menace? I know this is a polarizing one, so please, whether attacking or defending, please politely join the fight in the comments section below. Also, is there a movie you love that deserves a strong defense? You can email me at thefilmdefender at gmail.com, tweet me at thefilmdefender, post to my Facebook page, again, The Film Defender, or simply comment below and let me know what film you want me to fight for. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more film defenses to come, and until next time, The Defense Rests. Playing with my Christmas toys This is gonna be so cool But for this film's tar- Tarmit? Obvious- Obviously, 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 obviously My teeth look really yellow The obvious standouts are Ewan McGregor the obvious standouts are Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson. Ugh. We also get subtle callbacks to the speeder chase on the forest moon of Endor on in... <laughs> oh, that's such a hard thing to say. <laughs>
Why did I ride it like this? We also get subtle callbacks to the speeder chase on the forest moon of Endor in Return of the Jedi, as well as the trench run in A New Hope. Boom! Ah, at the end of A New Hope. Oh well, it's close enough. And while I do wish Darth Maul had survived the fight, his getting cutting... Cutting? Despite its... <laughs> rough start. Also, is there a, also is there a movie you love that deserves? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs>